Now we're welcoming Miles and Marvin for a brief chat. Miles, having been there in 2009 when Temporary Hills reopened the gates, you must be thrilled now to be going back as National Competitions Coordinator for the National Match Play. Yes, John, it's uh, fantastic uh, for me to as promote which important Tipperary, I suppose, for so many years, and Tipperary Hills, <coughs> under the stewardship of the late Sean Keane, was uh, an iconic uh, club in Pitchman Post and in County Tipperary, and it was absolutely <coughs> fantastic to see them come back. And they're back now as strong, and probably maybe stronger than ever, under the stewardship of Michael Brennan, who is a hard taskmaster down there, but you have to be to produce the goods and you will find Tipperary Hills will be a great venue for the match play. Michael told me if you don't bring your shovel don't come and complain about what's going on. Well that's his philosophy and you know what he might be wrong. Marvin I think the great legendary Mick Forrest was still in this pond the last national competition you officiated at in Tipperary. That's right John um, the inter-county of 1990 it was my only my second inter-county uh, as competition secretary of the union. It's a long time ago now. I find it hard to actually remember it, but, uh, <laughs> um, but I, I recall vividly from the morning of it, it was uh, very, very damp. Um, Peg Smith and myself were trying to uh, keep the show going and we were covered in uh, plastic bags and all that, but uh, it got going and, the, you know, it was very tough playing conditions. And um, and then the word was coming back from the course that forest is burning up uh, Tipperary Hills, and I don't think anyone could believe it because everyone else was basically struggling, and uh, to shoot uh, 19 under, I think, in the conditions that day was just, I suppose, testament to the man's ability uh, in 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 all uh, forms of weather. You know, but it was, it was a very memorable occasion for me. For me, as uh, you know, going back 27 years. Miles, we've had 56 years, I think, of championships. This is only the second time in history that the National Gents Match Play and the National Gents Stroke was played in the same county in the same year. So that's quite a coup for yourself and for Helen and for Tipperary. But the National Ladies Stroke Play won't be played in County Tipperary. It's going to be played up in cement in Drogheda. And that's a tried and trusted, proven venue for the Bishop of of Ireland for hosting championships. <coughs> Yeah, John, yeah, cement is a wonderful venue, for a, particularly for a stroke play competition as opposed to a match play because, as Ger said earlier, the last four or maybe five holes in cement really can take the best out of you. And when you're coming down to the last four holes with a score and trying to maybe, try and maybe to mind it or improve it slightly, it's not going to be easy done in cement. And the cement course has improved greatly over the last number of years as well. It is in very good condition at the moment. So I know the guys in Cement are looking forward to this and I hope the ladies uh, have a great championship there as well. Our national schools tournament's already done and dusted in the year. A wild and windy day in Tullamore and a historic occasion for some young lads from Mallow. But the thinking behind the change in date for that event. Well, I think we were um, conscious of the fact that if we have it at this time of the year, uh, schools are about to close in in the um, in the next few weeks, especially the secondary schools for those not involved in examinations. And that if there was um, um, a, a, what would you say, if 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 the schools was generating the interest that we hoped it would generate, uh, that it might uh, manifest itself in people taking up the game and joining clubs. And I think that was the thinking behind uh, when Paul has decided on the move to this time of year for the finals, I think it was a very good idea. And uh, that, that was the, the thinking behind the challenge. Yeah? Well, as you're going back to St. Stephen's again, which is very pleasing for me personally, but what's your assessment of how the inaugural year of the National Juvenile Match Play Championship went? Yes, uh, I think the National Juvenile Match Play was uh, a very welcome addition to the calendar. Uh, I suppose down through the years, you have those purists who will tell you that possibly juveniles and underage are not the future of our game. But believe it or not, if we don't foster and nurture juveniles within our game, then in a number of years, old fogies like us die off after a time. 
and there's no one replacing us. So I think it's very important. It was a wonderful championship in Royal Mead last year, and I know it will be a wonderful championship in St. Stephen's. And I wish that many, many, many years of success. And thanks, of course, to our sponsor who uh, took it up at very short notice last year, and long may he continue to sponsor it as well. Bourbon the National over 55s championships will now honour one of the most revered couples in Pitching Butch Univarna history, Catherine and EJ Bell. For that one, you'll be at an iconic venue celebrating its 50th anniversary. How much are you looking forward to, Clark? I, I think really looking forward to it. And, and it's, I suppose it's fair to say it's going to be a tough venue enough, um, maybe for the not so young seniors, but for the older seniors, I suppose. But that said, it's, it's, you know, it's marvellous to go back uh, to Clark for a championship. And uh, they, you know, I suppose um, from a pitch and union's point of view, uh, fly a lone flag there in 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 Uri. and, and um, we, I think we, we're conscious of that, and that's why we we would want to support them and give them every help we can. And um, the competition, uh, of course, the PJ and Catherine Bell, we switched that from the team event to to this more uh, prestigious championship, as was in the in the seniors. And uh, the reason there was we did not in any way want to uh, lose that connection uh, that goes back to the foundation of the union and the sport really. And um, we wanted to keep that and we felt that probably the best way of doing that was to link it to a major event like the seniors because I, I can see the seniors as probably one of the great big growth areas for uh, competitive pitch and put in the years ahead. And uh, we're delighted that it will carry the name of PJ and Catherine Bell and um, you know, I, I didn't know uh, PJ Bell, Paddy Bell, uh, but certainly knew, of course, Mrs. Bell, as we always affectionately called her, and uh, down through my down through the years, and uh, you know, she was such a, an iconic figure within our sport, and um, you know, you you um, you always treaded warily, I think, when you wanted to make any announcements or anything like that. Mrs. Bell was present, and she wouldn't be, she was never shy to. Uh, correct you or to take you to task but I, I, I'm absolutely thrilled I think it's was, it was a great um, it's a great occasion for us to have to have the names associated with the seniors. Lawyers national recognition for the third time in six years for Eric and a new championship targeting the twenties. Yes uh, Eric has a wonderful course coming I suppose in the last six or seven years coming on as a wonderful course for our provincial and national competitions. The under 20s, under 20s in my opinion, was an area not very well catered for. Because we have a lot of wonderful players in our game. An awful lot. But we have a lot of great, good players in our game as well. And they fall between the age of 16 and 2021, 20, where they really don't believe themselves to be good enough to mix it with the big boys. But now they're their own championship, and I really appeal to all those who fall into that category to support this competition, because all other sports cater for the in-between ages, so it's about time we did, and now that we are, it would be important that it would be supported well. Marvin, looking further afield briefly, in July, John Walsh and Chrissy Byrne will put world titles on the line in Norway. Yes, um, you know, and I, I was delighted to hear our, our current uh, match cat champion uh, exploring the, 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 the value and the virtues of uh, international pitch and putt because it certainly, you know, it, it does present a, a great opportunity for our players and no doubt the, um, the World Stroke Play in, in Norway will be a, a really uh, top class event and um, uh, we look forward to that and we, we hope, of course, obviously that Ireland will do, will figure very well with the Irish representation going and I was just in um, at San Sabria uh, for a meeting, uh, and we were watching some of the Catalan Open there, and it was it was hard, uh, you know it was great to see so many Irish players there. And that particular weekend also, we had a lot of Irish players playing in the Gallows Open in the Netherlands. And uh, all in all, despite you know the tri tribulations of international uh, pitch and put, it it would be hopeful that you know it would be hopeful that we will. Uh, strengthen that and that uh, Irish players will of course continue to play a, a very important part in that and uh, you know we, we do have uh, as as members of FIPA um, we have I suppose the cream of players in the international sport in the international game of pitch and putt and uh, we certainly the pitch, 
Pigeon Book Union of Ireland, as we stated at our meeting there in uh, San Saria, uh, that we want to drive on that and to ensure that that continues, and uh, uh, hopefully we can do that. Well, as Hill View hosted the first ever national match match after putting back in 1961, and they've hosted pretty much everything since, but strangely enough, never the gents stroke play until now. John Cavill won a monster stroke play there in 2006. John Walsh was match play champion there in 2002. Cork won the Intercounty Championship there in 2013, so it's got to be a Cork win in the stroke play in July, yeah? Oh, John, you're very hard on me. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I, I, I'm quite sure now that uh, after the match the, that the temporary lads will be well up for it as well. They're wonderful players in every county in Ireland. Uh, at the moment, I suppose, it's very hard to look past the gents in Cork and probably the ladies in either Kildare or Dublin. But having said that, when it comes down to the individual and stroke play, there are tremendous players all around the country. And I, I definitely, not being a betting man, won't be putting me money anywhere. But if I was, I still wouldn't be, put, be putting it on any individual at the moment. Marvin, the National Mixed Horses is in Lucan. That's the third time I think it's been in Lucan, equaling Tom Orphermoy and Iron. A Dublin couple always wins in Lucan, so it's going to be Dublin again, yeah? Uh, well, uh, I, yes, I was I was at the Leinster Mixed Horses in Lucan last year when it was won by a Dublin pairing, an old county pairing, and um, I'm sure that we'll have uh, 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 plenty of opportunities to, um, to to try and win it. But I think uh, you know um, Lucan again is is a great venue for us, and uh, uh, they always come up trumps for us, and that's it, very important. Um, and I'm sure the, the you know the, the the uh, contestants, the qualifiers from all over, will be will be fighting hard to probably prevent a Dublin win. But um, yeah, I suppose they will. They obviously, will be favourites. I would think. Yeah. And while there's a new time and date structure format for the national inter club tournaments, that's surely going to boost entries for those events. Yes, uh, I believe into the future that the inter club event will be one of the best events on the calendar. Uh, it probably hasn't come to fruition as yet because the way the match structure was in the qualifying didn't suit a lot of clubs. They couldn't commit players at the drop of a hat to play matches. We are putting a new structure on it this year. It will be stroke play qualifying rounds on a date already picked at venues to be picked and the match the Closing rounds of it then will be match play as previous years, but it will be all on a date of structure, so clubs won't have any excuse. Oh, I didn't know when it was going to be played, we couldn't field the team. And we do hope to have a launch of this competition later and put a lot more meat on the bones and try and encourage as many teams as possible to play in it. Because when you look at all codes in all sports, look at hurling football, the most passion you will see is when a player is playing for their club. When they put on their club colours and they're out there playing with the guys they're playing with every day of the week, that is where you find the passion in sport and we hope to introduce that to pitch and ball. And Marvin Ryston will host the Intercounty Challenges for the fourth time, that's second jointly, I think is the venue most often used. I believe the local club are really pushing the boat out in terms of promoting that event too. Oh yeah, uh, there's no doubt. I think Riceville is going to be a, um, a really fine venue for the Intercounty, John. Um, and I know a lot of work has already begun, uh, really, in relation to it. And uh, um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think, you know, the facilities at Riceville are excellent. Uh, we will have a very good course. And I think um, it's a great central venue also nowadays with the network of roads coming into into Kildare, and uh, I, I think it will be a fantastic a fantastic um, championship, and one we're really looking forward to. And uh, I know that the the Ryston Club are, are really striving to make it uh, a very memorable one, but with many additions to what we normally have. So yes, yeah, one to look forward to. And staying with you, Marvin, a big influence on the competitive scene. Environment currently is the new handicap system. What's your assessment of how that one's working? The handicap system, John, um, like everything else, uh, new. Um, 
has received some good and bad, bad uh, publicity. Uh, last year was the first year of it, so it was uh, you know we were assessing it as we went along, and we recognised um, from a, from early on uh, some issues that needed to be addressed, um, and we have addressed those, and I think now we have almost uh, a complete product. There might be a few other little items where we. We need to change maybe the returning processes and things such as that. But overall, we have um, now given back clubs control of the individual hand players' handicaps. I think that was an important thing. Uh, we have, um, you know, we're allowing the clubs to assess the players' ability to play the sport. And um, I think now it's it's beginning to show that it can be successful and can be worthwhile. Um, and it will allow players to find their correct level uh, in the sport at handicap level. Um, we took the opportunity uh, following convention uh, it, this year to allow players uh, an increase in handicaps above and beyond what they would earn through competition. And that's gone down well. I think and a lot of clubs have availed of it to come in. Now, it hasn't been a, um, a free-for-all as such. We have assessed uh, based on the input into the system, a player uh, on the player's handicap, we've assessed uh, all their their performance throughout uh, 2016 and the start of 2017. And if where uh, it's felt a, a full increase of 1.5 is warranted, then that is given. Um, on the other hand, maybe players uh, a, a one shot increase or maybe 0.6 or whatever takes them into a new grade or or, or that, but they may be showing some potential to come down. So we want to try and get it right. Um, and I'm hoping this year that more and more clubs will engage with the system and uh, see how beneficial it is to uh, the members where they can they can actually earn their handicap. It's not going to be uh, going back to um, uh, hoping you get a shot back or whatever. Or if you won something, maybe uh, you were prevented from getting a shot back, although it didn't necessarily reflect your ability to play. Uh, the sport of, of that given handicap. So I think all in all, um, this year will be a, a year where we will just tidy up some of the points in relation to it and um, and, and hopefully it will drive forward then and that uh, everyone will embrace it. And uh, it, it, I think it will, it will in the long term be seen as being very, very beneficial to the sport in general. Miles and Mervyn, we wish you every success with the championship season ahead. Gurumi Mahogu Galer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for your attendance and we do apologise um, for the, the delay in the start but sometimes these things just happen and we don't want it. But I'd like to just say our thanks to Horizon, the Horizon Energy Group for their sponsorship of the Match, match Play Championships for 2017 and I wish you all well and during the season. Thank you. Okay.